Thank you. I will tell you something about myself first. I love big cities. Uh, I've been living in Buenos Aires in Argentina and in Sao Paulo in Brazil, and now I live in New York in the United States. And this is my very first day in Korea, my very first day in Seoul, and I must say I feel quite at home already. This is a great city. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is um, I want to speak to you about a technology that everybody who works knows. Everybody knows it, many people apply it. It has shaped our societies and the way we work everywhere in the world. And that, that technology is called management. But first, I want to show you another technology. Anybody here knows what this technology is called? Uh, I, ca I still cannot say it adequately in Korean, sorry. It's a typewriter, right? <laughs> it's a typewriter. Um, I, when I was 16 years old, I had a seminar to learn writing on a typewriter, and it was a very important technology everywhere in the world. Everybody who wrote te texts used typewriters for a very long time, for many, many decades. Now, anybody here used a typewriter over the last five or ten years? No, nobody. Why? The big question is why? Okay, typewriters are wonderful to write, but they are crap to send emails, right? Or to post about this event on Twitter or on Facebook. So typewriters went away. They went into museums or onto the garbage heap. And um, this is very similar to where management belongs, and I will explain why that is so. Management is also a technology, like a typewriter. It's just that it's different, it doesn't help us writing, it helps us to organize work. And this is the world that it was invented for. Imagine the time 100 years ago when the very first mass-produced cars were produced in the United States, like here in, at the Ford Motor Company in the United States. Every car that came out of the factory was the same. They looked like they were just the same. And for that time, for the newly grown mass markets 100 years ago, and for those societies where very few people had adequate education, management was invented for that kind of work, to make it happen efficiently. And this is the inventor of management. Few people know his name. Few people really celebrate him every year. He changed our societies by inventing the way we work still today. His name is Frederick Taylor, and he was the most important inventor of this technology that is called management. Frederick Taylor had this great idea. He said, OK, we mass produce everything. Everything is produced in large quantities. Most of the people cannot read or write. They are uneducated. So how should we organize work? And he had this great idea to separate the thinking from the doing, to take the thinking out of the doing. That's why he, created, he helped create organizations where few people have to use their brains and most people just had to use their hands. Now, the irony is that was an amazingly... If, it was a wonderful idea for the industrial age 100 years ago. But the irony is that we still apply the same technology today in our organizations. You can go to any large company anywhere in the world and they still have this thinking. Thinkers at the top, doers at the bottom, and then we have command and control management. Everywhere in the world this is applied and you see it in the org charts and the methodologies. Few people think and speak, most people just obey. It's command and control. And this worked very well. It was very fitting for societies 100 years ago, 70 years ago, 50 years ago. But our society has moved on. Work and business and companies haven't. So we are still stuck in something like Soviet Union governance inside organizations. Countries like Germany, where I come from, or the United States, or Korea have moved to democratic governance. Organizations haven't. Organizations, businesses, large companies still, they still think that people who think and govern are at the top, non-thinkers, stupid workers are at the bottom. And that is, it's not cool. It's not sexy at all. It's like we live in democratic societies, we work in Soviet Union autocracies. It's not really cool. So one might say, the markets have changed, People have changed. We are all very much, much more educated as in our societies.
than 100 years ago. Markets have changed. We don't do much mass production today. We have more individualized production and services, customized markets, very competitive markets, but we still govern our organizations, we still lead them in the way that we did in the industrial age. And only some companies have really discovered a different way to lead themselves, to govern themselves. And this is an amazing example. In the movement that I have been part of for 10 years, we found amazing companies. And this is one example. This is a bank from Sweden, from Scandinavia and Europe. It's called Handelsbanken. They have, oh, have 10,000 employees and no management at all. They simply don't have plans. They don't have targets about growth or how much you have to sell. They don't have bonus systems. They don't have an org chart, like this pyramid structure that says, that tells everybody who's about to think and who is about to obey. They don't have that. They don't have a strategic plan. They don't even have a marketing department. And they have been, for 37 years, Europe's most successful bank. For about four decades, this has been the most successful bank in Europe. And they don't do management. And there are some companies that have done this kind of thing. They don't believe in the industrial age notion of command and control, of dividing thinkers from doers. And the interesting thing is that work in this kind of organization is much smarter, much more interesting, and leads to much more learning also. So when T Frederick Taylor invented management, he thought organizations should be Manage like machines, like take a machine apart, optimize the parts, everything will be wonderful. An organization, a business, should work like a well-oiled machine. That was the thinking 100 years ago. A couple of decades ago, we went further, we learned a lot in sciences. And one of the sciences, well, the sciences today, they tell us, well, social systems like a university, a hospital, a company, a government, they are not machines at all. They are not pyramids that can be managed from the top down by command and control. They are actually less like pyramids, they are more like peaches. And being a peach organization means you are not governed from the top down, but from the outside in. So the markets ultimately should lead the business. And if you think that through, this thinking from the complexity sciences, from systems theory, then you find out that organizations shouldn't be pyramids at all, you shouldn't divide thinkers from doers, everyone in a great company should actually think and do both things. We can do that because it's not the industrial age anymore. So organizations should be organized in small teams. They could be much more entrepreneurial, much more learning, much less hierarchical and bureaucratic. And some organizations have figured out how to do that, just that. But there is a challenge, right? And the challenge is that we have trouble. We ha there's a difficulty, difficulty. The big difficulty is to believe that people can do that, that they can be successful, that they can work in environments, in companies that are not at all command and control. We have to start believing that. The situation today is that organizations treat their people mostly like donkeys. You know the image, right? If you think that people are donkeys, how do you make a donkey run? You put a carrot in front of him, and you have a stick behind, right? This is how most companies work today. They believe that oh, I have to define targets and punishments and controls, so I have to define, I have to give people carrots and a stick to punish them if they don't run. I treat people just like donkeys. Right? And the problem is, to change organizations from industrial age command and control to entrepreneurial, non-bureaucratic, highly empowering work, we have to change the way we deal with people as well. And there is a very interesting experiment that has been done hundreds of times everywhere, and you can do it everywhere in the world with all kinds of people. You ask them, do you think that you work for more than just money? Do you believe that you 
want to achieve something more than earning money and hanging around, sitting around at your work. Uh, and you ask people, okay, do you, is, the consequence of that would be, do you really look for something more significant, like meaning, like a cause in work? And everyone says, yes, I want that. I am motivated by the desire to fulfill my potential. You can ask people everywhere in the world that very same question. And everybody will say, yes, of course. I'm not just here for the work. I don't just work for the money. I work for something like self-fulfillment and growth. The problem is, we know that about ourselves. And this experiment shows that we have trouble believing that about other people. We have a big, fat prejudice in our minds about other people. We all know I am driven by the desire to contribute, to do something significant. But we don't really believe that the other people, other people are just the same. And as everybody has this kind of trouble in our belief systems, in our heads, ah, other people are like lazy, stupid, they have to be governed, they have to be forced to work like donkeys. That's why we don't, we still haven't managed to get rid of this old industrial age way of organizing work. We are stuck in management mode. We could do something very different. And I to, want to give you an example of that as well. Because most of us actually know the old way of working. Bosses tell worker people, working people, employees what to do. But there are different examples of how work can work, or work can look like. And very interesting examples come from companies like Handelsbanken in Sweden. But there are also other great examples in the world of sports. Imagine a Formula One team. There is no powerful bosses there, no command and control, no people in their Formula One team. You don't have people who just act. Everyone is not only allowed to think, but everybody has to think as well. In a Formula One team, not only the pilot or the manager of the team has to think. Everybody has to think at all times, and you see that very well in sports teams. Every member of the team has to be a master in what he or she does, and everyone has to think at all times and make important decisions. We could actually do the same with business, but that requires that we understand that command and control, Taylor's way of organizing the work, will not bring us there. So, there are two ways of organizing the work. One is pyramids, command and control. Bosses do the thinking. The other is, we, ha we can start believing that people actually want to work, that they want to think, that they want to be creative and inventive at work, that they want to contribute to any organizations they are part of. And once we make that real, we can really transform organizations. We can really create organizations that are entrepreneurial, smart, agile, and also desirable to work at. So if we want to change the way that organizations work today, we have to change business education and we have to change companies. That's a big challenge for all of us. Because still in business educations, everywhere in the world, we learn the way of command and control thinking, of not trusting in people, but to treat them like donkeys. Treat them with, with lots of control, hierarchy, bonus systems, and punishment. We have to change management education, or business education, and we have to transform organizations as they are. And for that, we need the belief about some, but something that we already know, that people actually want to work, that you don't, we don't have to force them anymore. The industrial age is over, and we really can shape organizations differently. If you ask yourself, okay, who's doing it? Who will do it? The answer is very simple. We actually have to do it together, everywhere in the world. We have to apply a new way of thinking a non-industrial age way of thinking, a contemporary thinking for our world today, we have to apply it to both education 
and to our organizations? And the answer is simply, we have to do it together. There is no way to change organizations and the world by just changing a few people. We actually have to learn it. We all have to learn it in Korea and everywhere in the world. Thank you very much.